how are you today? Good. All right, well, today is our last day for Aesop's Fables from this book. Um, I just want to point out that this book was from the Dolly Parton uh, Imagination Library. So if you or someone you know has a Dolly Parton Imagination Library book, you can share about that. It's really good. Uh, and if you're watching this and you know somebody who would like to receive Dolly Parton Imagination Library books, I'll put the link in on how to get that. Uh, but yeah, let's read some more of Aesop's Fables. Okay, so today we are going to read one called the stag and the pool. And a stag is a deer that has antlers, so it's a male deer. The stag at the pool. A thirsty stag came to a clear pool for a drink of water. He saw his reflection and paused to admire his magnificent antlers. Lucky me, I must have the largest and most shapely rack. That's what you call the antlers, is the rack of any deer on the plain. He thought, but gracious, look at my legs. His legs were long and lean. How awfully embarrassing, he snorted. If only my puny legs were as grand as my antlers. The stag didn't notice that a lion crouched in the tall grass nearby. The lion didn't care about the stag's antlers or his skinny legs. She licked her lips and thought how yummy fresh venison would taste this morning. When she sprang from her hiding place, the startled stag darted away. The chase was on. The lion was fast, but on the flat, open plain, she couldn't overtake the stag. On long, nimble legs, the stag bounded far out ahead of the pursuing lion. When the stag turned into the woods, his massive antlers knocked against low branches and became entangled in a snarl of vines and underbrush. He tried desperately to free himself, but it was no use. The lion would have venison steak for breakfast after all. What an idiot I am, said the stag. I despise these legs, yet they would have saved my life if my beloved antlers hadn't got in the way. The moral of the story is we do not often appreciate the plain and practical. The deer, he thought, oh, my antlers are so beautiful. And that my legs, my legs aren't pretty, I don't like those. But then when he was trying to run and save his life, it was the legs that were saving his life and his antlers that he thought was so beautiful, those were the ones that got caught in the uh, vines. Sometimes something that is plain and not very pretty, but very practical and does a good job is more important than something just that's just pretty. All right. The next story is called The Ox and the Frog. The Ox and the Frog. Nearly breathless and waving his arms wildly, a very young frog bounded up to his dozing father. Wow, Pop! Pop, you won't believe it, an incredible sight, a creature, a monster, a stupendous gargantuan mountain of a beast with terrible horns that brush the clouds and a body so wide it blocks the sun. See, he's in the shadow. Wow. The old frog rolled his eyes. Ah, oh, poo, son, what you saw was not a terrible beast at all, but merely Farmer White's lazy ox. I know for a fact that animal is not much taller than I am, and I can easily make myself as wide. Stand back, stand back son, and watch your old dad. Father's frog sucked in air and held his breath, blowing himself up like a shiny green balloon. Was the ox as big as this? Oh, much bigger than that, Pop. The old frog gulped more air and puffed harder. As big as this? Much, much bigger. Father Frog, determined, 
not to be overshadowed by silly old logs. Sucked and puffed, gulped and gasped, huffed and poofed until he was swollen and round that he nearly rolled from his mud nest to a nearby pond. Now, son, he said with some difficulty, that ox couldn't be as big as kaboosh. A big head may lead to one's undoing. So the dad frog tried to be so big and got more and more air and get bigger and bigger and then finally just, just exploded because he was trying to be as big as an ox. So sometimes when we try to get all puffed up and try to make ourselves big, it ends up hurting ourselves. So, all right. One more story, and today we are going to read The Gnat and the Bull. The Gnat and the Bull. A gnat settled on a bull's horn to rest. He sat and sat and sat and sat. Then he adjusted himself and sat some more. When he was finally ready to fly on, he buzzed. Mr. Bull, would you like me to leave you alone? The bull grunted. Oh, Mr. Gnat, I didn't realize you were up there, so I suppose I won't miss you when you're gone. This is little bitty gnat, this big bull up on his horn. And the gnat was like, well, want me to leave you alone now? And the bull was like, oh, I didn't even notice you. And the moral of that story is, we are not always as important as we think we are. Yes, and that's an important story because sometimes we think we're the most important and everybody's looking at us and everybody's paying attention to us and we feel awkward or we feel ashamed or we feel like everybody's paying attention, we're the most important and it's just not. We're just like everybody else, we're just a normal person having a normal day. And sometimes that can be a good thing. We can just go about our life. So, yeah. We're not always the most important or the biggest. Sometimes we're just a little bitty nap. And that's okay. It's all right to be that. Just a normal person in the room. All right. I hope that you have enjoyed Aesop's Fables. And that you're having a good day. And I will talk to you later. Bye.